We got two new women's champions crowned, new NXT Women's North American Champion at Halloween Havoc, and new Knockouts Champion in Spectacular Match of the Year caliber match. Then we got probably the worst Raw in years, Zarya debuts on NXT hitting F5, and how did Camille do in her basically AEW debut match? Welcome everyone to Ring the Bell, this is DS and this is your Women's Wrestling Weekly. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm wearing my Halloween outfit right now that nobody got here in Chicago because like, what do you mean I'm the most iconic K-pop press conference ever? Only the real ones will know this Min Hee Jin outfit. Anyway, we have tons to talk about. Let's start with the two PLEs that we got this weekend, starting with NXT Halloween Havoc. First match we got was NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade versus the newcomers Julia and Stephanie Bakir. Roxanne and Cora here were rocking Shining Twins looks. Super, super cute. And of course, Julia and Stephanie looked badass here. How I would describe this match was this is a hold my beer match by three of the competitors here in this match because we have probably the three best wrestlers on NXT here and Cora. And literally, I mean that by no shade. I'm actually going to talk about how Cora did. But yeah, some of the moves in this match were like, bam. And then the other one's like, well, I could do this. Bam, bam. bam. It, was, it was wild. So to finish, Julia hits this top row butterfly suplex followed by Stephanie Vakir's beautiful corkscrew moonsault, both on the champion Roxanne for them to take the win. And just all the moves that everyone was pulling out, like Julia spinning Michinoku Driver, Roxanne's satellite head scissors face buster into the cross face, it was just all so beautiful. And let's talk about Cora. She had a huge responsibility here. It's her first match since like January of this year. And she's in this ring with the best of the best that was just introduced to NXT. She was tasked with looking great for herself while putting this two newcomers over. And overall, I think she looked great. She looked like she belonged in the ring and she got memorable moments like that coffin drop and the swanton. So overall, props to Cora too. Also, that knee to Cora was wild. But yeah, we got so much goodies here. I'm salivating for all the possibilities here. I I love to see all four of them and maybe like even Delta on a deadline match, but with the title involved maybe for a change. Either way, I think we're going to be treated so well until at least stand and deliver. So I am so stratified. And a very interesting situation for the NXT Women's North American Championship, Kalani Jordan defending her title against all of Fatal Influence members in a gauntlet match. So Kalani had to face Jasmine Nix, JC Jane, and finally Fallon Henley in that order. And Kalani looked really cool in a Poison Ivy costume. At first, I just saw like green things coming out of her hair and I was like, is she Shrek? The match was good. This was Jasmine's first PLE singles match, although it was technically a gauntlet format. And Kalani pins her with the 450. And after a short match with JC, Kalani rolls her up for a win. And pissed off JC then attacks Kalani until Fallon comes in for her match. And from there, Fatal Influence rampant interference starts. So when Kalani hits Moonsault, Jasmine distracts the referee from counting. And JC distracts Lani, giving Fallon time to block her 450. And Fallon pins the champion with Shining Wizard becoming the new women's North American champion. I'm really happy for Fallon. She's a solid wrestler. I'm still like warming up to her yeehaw character or fatal influence as a group to be honest yes but i always do enjoy her work in the ring so i'm happy for her in my mind though i was trying to see who i want to see as a champion first like fallon or jc who are you guys rooting for more as far as the match i think because they had to divide like 15 minutes they had into three different matches honestly we didn't have enough to see like really good wrestling but we did get to see a glimpse of what fallon versus lani full match could be so hopefully we'll be getting that full singles match between the two with ample time sooner than later but i think this match being a gauntlet match did let Kalani stay strong, looking like a fighting champion. Yeah, but she also had like really great reigns with amazing, amazing defenses. So props to her. I'm very satisfied. And post match, we see Delta, now named Zarya, shows up in the ring and attack all three Fatal Influence members. She spears the new champion, Felon, and F fives her, laying everyone out. That F five. Seeing F five from a woman that was like really cool in WWE. By the way, this is her second time showing up here because she previously showed up after a tag match finish. So she's like really in everyone's business. I think she looked really really good here like granted she looks awesome with that like super super bright white light too but in the ring she looked awesome women's wrestling right now though is like packed with powerhouses and already there are so many strong ones like Bianca, Lash, Jordan, and Statlander so we will see how she'll stand out in this very tough competition it's really the toughest it's ever been to stand out as a powerhouse in women's wrestling so we'll see also my diva stand mine was blown because Ava announced that the first match for NXT 2300 when they go to the historic ECW arena in Philly, it's gonna be Lola Vice versus Jada Parker in a hardcore match with a special guest referee. Wait for it. Wait for it. 
it's ECW legend Don Marie. Like, what? I literally could not believe my ear when I heard Don's name. Like, Don is coming back. Because with ECW, we always get, like, Bubba Ray Dudley and Tommy Dreamer. Props for WWE for making this happen. What a pleasant surprise. And also, how cool is that we just recently released Don Marie interview? So, if you haven't yet, check that out. Oh, this is amazing. Then we got another really strong PLE TNA Bound for Glory with three knockouts matches. So we first got Ash by Elegance and Heather by Elegance, the new knockout Heather Reckless is Ashified, versus Zaya Brookside and NXT's Brinley Reese. Ash and Heather looked freaking amazing. They were rocking the Devil and Angel outfit, and Zaya and Brinley looked really cute with the sky blue and red ensemble. This match was kind of funny because I think Brinley stood out the most out of the four. Brinley catches Heather doing crossbody from top rope, launches her onto her shoulder for a TKO, which was an awesome, awesome spot. Like, see, there's a lot of powerhouses going on. But at the end, while Zaya was busy choking the concierge, Heather and Ash hits impressive springboard Spanish fly and rarefied air combo for the win. That was really, really cool. And I just gotta say, this, like, by elegance partnership is so smart. For the longest time, my ESL brain was, like, so confused about this, like, by elegance name. And it all makes sense. If she starts adding people to this elegance brand into a stable with the by elegance last name it's gonna be so camp it's gonna be so good i'm so here for it ds by elegance i'm here for it next we got knockouts tag team championships spitfire versus rosemary and nxt's wendy chu this was a fun match i know this is like a silly spot but i did enjoy when wendy tried to protect rosemary with the pillow in the corner and then like jody sherman suplexed the pillow off the ring it was just like so silly so stupid but also i liked it and at the end jody thread sherman suplexes both wendy and rosemary then spitfire hits their pressure drop double team finisher on Wendy to retain their titles in 11 minutes. This was another very strong tag team action from Spitfire and post-match the inter-brand creepy person affiliation has ended when Rosemary Spears, Wendy, ending their partnership. I'm stratified. This was a fun match. But we gotta talk about this match. Knockouts Championship because this blew my freaking mind. Holy hell. Jordan Grace, the Knockouts Champion versus Masha Slamovic. And we already know that they can put on a hell of a match from their previous encounter but this was just freaking another level. Oh my god. So, of course, both Jordan and Masha are famous for their intensity and the sheer power they bring to the ring. That is just always a treat. So that's kind of given. But what really stood out to me was how Jordan and Masha Masha wrestled like they had like a connected brain or something. Like some of the back and forth were so smooth, it was like unbelievable. The scream I scrumped when they were doing this like circusy back and forth pile driver filiparoo until Jordan hits Tombstone German suplex, which I was like, what even is this move? This was freaking awesome. And then Masha lands like multiple kicks on Grace, but then Champion like grabs Masha's leg and like put it around like a muffler and turns it into like this like exploder suplex or something. It was just really ridiculous and this was followed by juggernaut driver but masha kicks out which was like a huge shock because like nobody kicks out of juggernaut driver and the ending came when masha nails superplex that looked almost like a brain buster from the top rope and hit spike pile driver for the win in wild 20 minute matches they were like kicking out of their finisher like the moves they were pulling out was like what is going this was an instant match of the year quality match and just like unreal athleticism from the two the destructive energy coming out from the screen of this match. It was just unmatched. But also what was really cool was that this felt like a rediscovery of Masha Slanovich. She showed a lot of more emotion, selling her injured leg. And she did a lot more than just her usual power moves. Like when she just started running to the corner to the top rope, her Karana stuff, like stuff like that. It was just so very cool. 100% satisfied. Hats off to both of them. And also just to embrace after the match was just so beautiful. The whereabouts of Jordan Grace after this is a big focus too. So will she be joining already packed NXT roster? But also Jordan's championship reign was what was holding this knockouts division together. So will Masha be able to keep the division strong with her reign? We'll have to see. But again, so freaking good. Okay, moving to WWE SmackDown. Tiffany Stratton is back after taking last week off for a sick day. And she's like, Naya, I'll take care of Naomi. I'll get her off. Off your back, but Naya has a new favorite girl, and that is Candice LeRae. So we get Candice versus Naomi singles match, and this was a really fun match. Overall, it feels really fresh to see Candice in this mix 
at all. And you can tell that Naomi's having a lot of fun with Candice with some unique moves, the new moves that she pulled out. And while referee was distracted, Indy shoves Naomi into the ring post like last week. But Bailey then runs out to take Indy out, letting Naomi hit sit out, full Nelson slam for the win. This better not be Candice's exit from the storyline. Yeah, this was a fun one and can't wait to see where this all is heading. Stratify. Oh, by the way, we all noticed that random Sasha Banks shot up by Michael Cole, right? And backstage, all three GMs, Adam Pierce, Nick Aldis, and Ava announced his fatal full way for the women's tag team championship with damage control, Chelsea and Piper, and Meta 4 challenging Bianca and Jade at Crown Jewel. So it's going to be a really, really fun match. Okay, so Raw, that was probably... That was probably the worst Raws I've seen in years. And I'm trying to think, because we've had some bad Raws, but I feel like there was like nothing like this where I'm like... Where is everybody? Was there like a massive flight delays that people can get? Like, it just, just I'm just confused, like what happened? Yeah, so we got one match, Zelina versus Ivy Nile. I mean, they did what they can do. I know that Zelina, whenever she's given the chance, she makes chicken soup out of chicken sh and actually, Ivy Nile debuted her new finisher, which was cute. I, I It, it kind of reminds me of what Sonya Deville did, but this one, Ivy actually looked like she's doing the move. But yeah, this match is fine, and the storyline is really between the boys. Uh, good? Not bad! But that was basically it. We got, like, Rhea Ripley video package, and our world champion Liv and her muscle Raquel were, like totally just accessory part for the main event and to think that we have this huge Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan match and actually to give WWE credit they've done really fun job like mixing people in different brands to like build quite an interesting storyline for first like maybe a week or two but after that the interaction between Nia and Liv just kind of disappeared and now it's just like i can't even believe that the match is happening this weekend like what like what happened to everything and the fact that there was like seven bloodline melodrama segment over and over again in this two-hour show like really they couldn't have at least one pf chang segment like what the heck? like where the f is pfc where is natalia who just came back like what the heck is going on this honestly sucks because it is an anniversary of our evolution evolution show my favorite show ever october 28th it's the anniversary of my favorite wrestling show in my whole life, and <sighs> Raw really gave us nothing. That was WWE Raw, you guys. Their flagship show. And just quickly covering weekly episode of NXT, Damage Control vs. Lash and Jakara match was awesome, but really, Kyrie looked better than ever in a long time here. She looked really cool. There's something about Kyrie in NXT that just, like, hits differently. But also watching this match, I felt like Lash Legend is truly next level when it comes to her powerhouse style of wrestling. But like I said, it's a tough competition to be in there with other powerhouses, but she definitely stands out. And this match ends with DQ when Chelsea and Piper interfere to attack everyone. And I just love how Chelsea was slapping everyone, like, boom, boom, boom. I love it. Also, a new love story alert. There's a love story brewing with Carmen Petrovich. So, Ashante Diodonis comes to flirt with Carmen following him a couple weeks ago, I think, like distracting Carmen with a flower, causing her to lose. So, of course, her besties like Sol and Brinley are like, get lost, Adonis. She's not interested. So, after Adonis left, Carmen flips out at them, saying, like, what the hell do you know about what I like? Which turns into a singles match between Carmen and Soul. And in this match, Carmen gets distracted because Adonis is out there with another blonde girl and they leave mid-match. And while Carmen's just like watching them leave, Soul hits Soul Snatcher for the win. Yeah, love the messy ass storyline. Um, the only thing I wish was I hope I was able to see a little bit more character from Soul. Like we all know she's so freaking athletic, but from this match itself, you can't tell she's whooping her best friend's ass because she's a little boy crazy at this moment you can't tell that so i wish i can see a little bit more character from soul but the match itself is fun then we got tatum versus jada match where jada defeats tatum with her ass my favorite finisher move of all time not by the way she does this like inverted face lock suplex which looks so cool so powerful i hope she just does this all the time maybe even a finisher it looks really really cool and she also has this like ass submission move that you just have to see it looks it looks cool too and post-match lola comes out wanting a brawl with huge pull apart with the officials and then wendy chu attacks tatum out of nowhere abducting her in a production box and she actually comes out of this box at halloween have a couple days later and she spins a wheel to choose a match between her and wendy which will be a casket match which is it's gonna be amazing heading over to aw side dynamite we saw mercedes monet's muscle camille versus queen Am Nada. So this is Camille's like first actual match in AEW because she did have like, I don't know, like three minute match with Robin Renegade. But really outside of that, it was just like all one minute matches. And this felt, how do I say this? 
for like a booking failure or like a booking mistake. The match itself was fine. And the reason I think this was a mistake is because they're building Camille as this like massive powerhouse in AEW, someone that Chris Statlander has to go through before she gets to the final boss, Mercedes Monet. But not only since Camille's debut, Camille really wasn't booked as a menacing muscle, the protector of Mercedes, but this match also did nothing to reinforce that character. Queen Aminata, who I love, who we all love, she's a great wrestler, really had no business putting up this strong of a fight against Camille in the grand scheme of the storyline. What's supposed to feel like the clash of two titans with Camille and Statlander now just feels like a regular match after seeing how Camille barely dominated Queen Aminata. Again, you don't have to agree, this is just my two cents, and I know that storyline isn't AEW's main focus, but overall, to me, this booking, I just gotta say, girl, uh-uh. Girl, uh-uh. But who do I fully trust in wrestling? It's Chris Statlander, it's Jordan Grace, they never have a bad match ever, and Statlander is famous for making everyone look so great, so hopefully this match will be great between the two. But yeah, this was kind of... Then we had back-to-back -back Anna J matches on Rampage and Collision. AW really loved Anna J right now. As she went against Layla Gray and Viva Van. Yeah, this was fine. Also, AW is calling her Gory Bomb finisher Widow's Peak, and I'm just like, I have a big issue with it, because like, Victoria's Widow's Peak finisher is so iconic that this is similar, but not the same. You can't call this Widow's Peak. But yeah, this is to build for her championship match against Mariah May, who did cut a promo video on Anna, which was, that was really, really great. That was some good stuff. Mariah cut a heck of a promo, and I'm like, this is too close to reality. She's so good. But yeah, that match is happening. And we had Penelope Ford's return match as she defeated Robin Renegade with an improved impressive mood a lock, and post-match Jamie Hayter shows up on screen to challenge Ford for a match on Dynamite next week. Penelope looked great as always, so I'm kind of surprised that they're going to already have a match, but we'll see. Maybe they'll elongate it, whatever. We'll see. And that is it for this week's Women's Wrestling Weekly. Hope you guys all have tons of Halloween fun this weekend, and to see what I'm up to, follow me on Instagram at DSN and ring the bell DS on Twitter, and I'll see you next time. Bye!